As the match goes on, Dean Ambrose is fired up throughout the match, constantly getting lured into the trap by Miz. As the storytelling goes on and the wrestling goes on, high spot moves by the Miz. Miz is quite aggressive in this match and definitely in ring style. Better than he's looked in a while. As Dean Ambrose uh, is in his rough clothes, he goes like a lunatic and chases the Miz. And Maria, basically, the turn happens after this match. Near the end of the match, they've been storytelling the old match, doing good spots and the moves, good selling. Best Intercontinental title match since No Mercy last year. And then you've got Maria. As if she turned on the Miz by slapping him and showing her allegiance to Daniel Bryan. And one of the most convincing things. I don't know how many times the Miz tries to fool the referee into disqualification. Uh, throughout the match, well, that was part of the storytelling of the match, and then the referee do not buy it, so Maurice gets ejected as she tries to make it look like Dean Ambrose was the one that was secretly having an affair with Marie or something, and Marie was turning on the Miz. Quite good storytelling that we haven't seen before in the WWE. And then, after that, more tricks are made by The Miz as The Miz throws Dean Ambrose into the referee. And the uh, referee is very close to disqualifying him. Um, I think that sets up the distraction. Um... As Miz sets up the distraction as the referee's down. Um, Skull cut, rushing finale. One, two, three. The Miz into the Continental Champion. And guess what? Maurice comes out down the ramp to applaud the Miz. She's very happy with the Miz. And um, the Miz is Intercontinental Champion again. He probably will be throughout this year. I think he's going to be one of the greats of the uh, Intercontinental Division. I think. Do you think so, Hershey? Because I do. I really think so. Oh, I can't, I can like a vape, vape in the heart, but it, it it stops the heart from breathing when it eats the grime, but. Next two matches, uh, that one, the first one's a four star match, no doubt about that. Classic match. Four stars is like near perfect, like great match, basically. Five stars is absolutely perfect. As I would rate it, one star, bad, two star, Quite bad. Three star average. Four star absolutely great. And then you have the four, the halves in the middle, see. One and a half being real um getting really bad. Um two and a half being quite bad. Um, 3 being average, 3.5 being good match, better than average, 4 being a classic, 4.5 being one of the greatest. No, I won't say that, I won't say one of the greatest, I'd say a match to remember. 
Ah. Um, and five star obviously perfection which you don't get a lot of five stars in matches because they have to be perfect everything every element has to be there for that for them to score a five star match which they did in the main event they have the two matches um, Sasha Banks which one versus um, Norm Dar and um, Alicia Fox um, basically I'll just give this a two star I didn't go on for long it weren't bad though just um, basically to kill a bit of time there was uh, what, two eye spots in the match where Sasha Banks goes off the top rope with a double knee and then a uh, British one does that flip off the top rope to defeat Norm Dar then you got the Kendall on the uh, pole match for the women's title. And I'll give that about a two star. That's basically co just covering time, basically. Um, not much to the match, really, that match, really. Um, that was basically to kill time as well. Now you get onto the Hardy Boys match. With Shemless. Now I, I wanted this. To be a five star match. I expected it. Uh, well. Kind of expected it to be a five star match. But I was not disappointed. Because it was a great match. And I'm going to give this match a four star. Because there's so many high spots in it. And the storytelling in the cage match. Was absolutely great. It goes back to the old school days. As you won, As a traditional cage match. You know, as they're fighting to get out. You know, that's traditional back in the day when they had the cage matches. That's what it was supposed to be when wrestling weren't exposed. That's what it was, trying to get out the cage. Obviously, you had the aggressiveness of uh, Cesaro and Shemness, a lot like the Acolytes used to be. You know, the two of the toughest bastards in the WWE. Um, the Hardy Boys, Legends, this match is uh, great, has an uh, impact in the cage, as they use the cage, um, Cesaro and uh, Shemness throw uh, both of them, both the Hardy Boys with velocity into the cage, like the APA would do or Stone Cold would do, you know, give it that extra aggressiveness. A um, couple of great moves by um, Shemness and uh, Cesaro as the in-your-face kick-your-fucking-ass team. Um, then you got uh, the Hardy Boys with a couple of great spots, great flying spots. Um, Jeff Hardy nipping up over Matt to crash into Cesaro and Shemness into the cage. Same with Matt Hardy. Doing the same, crashing into the cage. Then you got him at the top of the cage trying to get out. Um, Jeff Hardy, uh, midway through the match, after a couple of um, high spots um, with the Hardy Boys, crashing, doing some fancy moves, crashing into the um, cage with the uh, flips and drop kicks. Um, as they go out, um, Jeff Hardy manages to get out by the skin of his teeth, basically. I'm expecting a suplex at this point by Cesaro. Well, I wish it had happened. It would have been absolutely one of the biggest oh my god moments since Edge jumped off the ladder and speared Jeff Hardy straight to the floor at WrestleMania 7. 17, I mean. No, rest 17, 7. Fucking, I'm getting my numbers wrong to die. I told you my neck is very hurting and I've been up. So this is not going to be the most P-R-O-F-E-S-I-O-N-A-L-P-O-D-C-A-S fucking T. It's not going to be anyway. Jeff Hardy managed to get out in a good way, and then uh, 
Matt's basically in there on his own. Uh, there's more some some more high spots where Jeff Hardy's at the door, and Shemness, as he's at the cage door, Shemness, boom, bro kick straight to the cage door, bang, smashes Jeff straight out of the out of the uh, to the aisle. Basically, a knockout kick. You can feel it. You can feel the velocity of the kick there. That was a great high spot. Then you got Matt Hardy trying to get out. And then Shemness, and uh, with the help of Zazaro, does the white noise. Both of them, the white noise off the top rope. The impact of that move was great. Another great high spot. Then, um, it's half put off basically by Jeff Hardy. As we all wanted to see, as we all expected to see. Whether it's going to happen or not. The classic Jeff Hardy. Take no risks. In a recent podcast uh, with uh, Jericho. He's not slowed down a bit. He's always going to be a risk taker. He probably will be when he's 80. He'll be jumping off cliffs. Into sea. And doing all types of stunt. Crazy extreme shit. It's an addiction. He likes danger. He likes that danger and that extremeness that's his drug that is Jeff Hardy's extreme drug, he'll jump off a fucking cliff into the sea as long as he knows he's not going to die or he'll drive a fucking crosser 200 mile an hour into a ramp and crash through some windows that's what extreme Jeff Hardy is. The pain, the risks, that's the buzz that Jeff Hardy gets. So, the high spot of the match, definitely a four star match. Jeff Hardy with a double backflip. I think, uh, to be honest, um, better than uh, the Swanton Bomb off the top of the uh, cage because I've never seen that from, well, I don't think I've ever seen that from Jeff Hardy doing a flip like that off the top of the cage or anyone. There's been some great moves off the top of the cage. I can remember him fully loaded with Kishi. Was it with Kishi that went off the top of the cage and onto Val Venus? I could have fucking killed him, like I said about the moves, a splash of Rikishi. I know Jeff Hardy's done a swanton bar off the top of the cage before. My favourite ever move off the top of the cage was when uh, Chris Benoit did the flying headbutt. Fucking hell. 